Hi, I'm going to read my favourite book called Lester and Clyde by James H. Reese. Illustrated by James H. Reese. Hey there, there. H. Reese. There, there, there. Good start. Far away from the city, in the green countryside, live two fat green frogs known as Lester and Clyde. Their home is a pond that is sparkling and bright, surrounded by flowers. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Lester and Clyde, I think, sitting on the lily pad in the pond. The pond where they live is so peaceful and still. Butterflies flutter about and birds trill. The air is sweet smelling and perfectly clear. A place where all creatures can live without fear. Can you see all the creatures? A beetles and a bug, a butterfly, another butterfly, dragonfly, and Lester and Clyde, and flowers, and toadstools, and water lilies, lots of things. Oh, and a spider. These frogs are no beauties. They have spotty hides, long, skinny duck feet, and white tummy sides. Their mouths seem too wide and their legs much too long. They look like spare parts put together all wrong. <clears throat> Lester's the smaller and he's full of fun. A naughty, a cheeky, a mischievous one. Clyde is much older and likes simple things such as beautiful flowers and clear bubbling springs. I think this one is Lester. And this one is Clyde. One day when old Clyde was asleep in the sun, young Lester decided on having some fun. Here he is having a snooze in the sun. He croaked out his loudest in Clyde's open ear and Clyde leapt sky high in an anguish of fear. Oh, I think it scared him. Look at him. Ah! This trick gave him such an incredible fright that Clyde's bright green skin turned a bluish grey white. But keeping his temper in very tight rein, he said very softly, don't do that again. He doesn't look very happy. A few minutes passed and Clyde stopped feeling mad. He climbed up to relax on a soft lily pad. The day was so hot and the bird note so sweet that soon he was dreaming again, fast asleep. He's having a snooze. Oh no, what's he up to with that stick? <clears throat> but fun-loving Lester held up a sharp stick. He was going to play yet another trick. He poked the stick up through Clyde's soft lily pad, which sank to the bottom and then was Clive mad. Oh look, blah, 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 down to the bottom. Spluttering and spitting and seething with rage, Clive pointed and shouted. Now, I've reached the stage when I cannot, I will not put up with you near. You're a pest, you're a menace. You cannot live here. He looked very grumpy. They argued and bickered and shouted all day till Lester said sadly, Oh, have it your way, he told himself smugly, that in a short while, he'd find his own pond where he'd live in his style. Look, he's packed up his things in a bag that says frog things, and off he went. He set out in the dusk and had not travelled far when he, made it up an, when he made up a bed in an old broken jar. Not a wink, not a blink did he sleep all that night. For many strange sounds kept him rigid with fright. Oh, looks a bit scared. He dozed in the morning and then set out late. It was hot, it was dusty, a thing that frogs hate. Then he saw just ahead a large golden pool, and wasting no time, he jumped in. The poor fool. Rubbish. Coke can. He hit bottom and then there were no words to tell. His nostrils, nostrils were filled with a horrible smell. 
what he thought was cool water was brown thick muck. In panic he yelled, someone help me, I'm stuck. Ugh, yuck. All that yucky stuff there. But after a struggle, he crawled up on the bank where he sat quite appalled. His whole body stank. In front of him lay in the sludge and the slush, old rotting rubbish and mildewy mush. Look at all the rubbish, milk cartons and coke cans and an old car, more cans, old tyre. Yuck. And there he is all covered in muck. He sadly, very sadly he thought, as he trudged on his way to the pond where he lived until just yesterday, he pictured the flowers of every hue and remembered the water, clear crystal blue. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Later in the day, Lester stood on the bank of a pond filled with cans and a squashed petrol tank, worn rubber tires and an old iron bed. Such gross human habits, they made him see red. Look at all the rubbish. Yuck. Disgusted and angry, the small frog moved on and found yet another pollution-spoiled pond. <clears throat> Even an old shoe. Look at all the yuck coming out of the pipe. Its surface was covered with greasy black oil. The decaying vegetation made Lester recall. Now we are eight to return to his own pond and Clyde. The sights he had seen had made him squeamish inside. He yearned for clear water and sweet smelling air and the voice of a frog like himself who would care. More, more rubbish and a snail. Lester turned in his tracks and he set off for home. He'd been such a fool. He felt so alone. Oh, never again would he tease and trick Clyde. He felt so ashamed of himself that he cried. On a branch by the pond that was home, old Clyde sat. He'd been mean to young Lester, no doubt about that. So he jumped with delight when he heard Lester say, I'm sorry about everything, Clyde. Can I stay? Lester gazed at the pond and gulped down the fresh air. He told Clyde that his journey had been a nightmare. He looked at the lilies, the birds and the bees. He knew then contentment. How simple things please. Then he asked Clyde, why is it if frogs really care that men pollute ponds and foul up clean air? They say we're no beauties, the poor mixed up lot. What do they know of beauty? What a cheek they have got. Clyde shook his head sadly at all he had heard. What a crime, he croaked loudly. It's simply absurd, but try not to worry. Although it's so wrong, at least we're safe here. Until man comes along. Oh, look what's there coming to do some digging. That doesn't look very promising. The end. I hope you enjoyed that one. I enjoyed reading it. Bye.